A great presentation starts in the language of the consumer and finishes in the language of the expert. I've heard it said that you should spend less time trying to get the audience to understand you and more time making sure that the audience knows that you understand them. And that is a language game. <laughs>
Before you can start explaining to people what you do and how you do it, you have to have clarity. And so in this session, we are going to cover the five things that you need clarity on. When I was growing up, my house in the subdivision that I lived in was the house that everybody played in. My house was the house that all of the neighborhood kids went to. We played every game in the front yard of our house. We played kickball, we played softball, we played baseball, we played wiffle ball. We played so much ball in the front yard of our house that there were permanent kind of baselines, just tr the grass was dead where the baselines were. First base was where a frisbee had landed and we just left it there. Second base was a tree, third base was a rock that just sat in our yard. And home plate was this general area just around the driveway. We played every game there. Oftentimes my brother and I would come out to play with our neighborhood friends and we would disagree about what game to play. My brother would want to play baseball, but I'd always want to play kickball. We'd get five or ten friends all around, and my brother always seemed to win those arguments. My brother always seemed to be able to convince everybody else that his game was the better game. He had something that I didn't have. He had clarity in five areas, and I was all over the place. Clarity matters, and it gets people <coughs> to take action, and it gets people to take the next step with you. So I want to go through in this session five things that you need clarity on, and the first of those five things is the problem that you solve for your audience. See, what I want you to know is that your audience does not sit around waiting for a system. Your audience did not wake up this morning hoping for a program. Your audience did not lay awake last night wishing that they had seven pillars in their life. I can promise you that. You know what people woke up with this morning? People woke up with problems. And it is your job to be able to explain what is the problem that you solve for your audience. Now when I ask most people what is the problem that you solve for your audience, most people don't actually give me a problem. Most people give me a solution. When I ask health coaches, what is the problem you solve for your audience, health coaches will often say, healthy eating. But healthy eating is not a problem. Healthy eating is actually a good thing. What is the problem that you solve? And here's the hardest part. You have to state it in the language of the consumer, not the language of the expert. Now, some of you, what you're working on in these three days is brand new to you. You've never actually gotten paid to do this. You don't even know if it's a business yet. You're just wondering if it's a crazy idea, a bad idea, or a good idea. And you may not be immersed in the language of experts yet. But many of you watching this today are experts. You've been thinking about your topic for a very long time. You've been reading articles about it for a very long time. You've been watching videos about it. You've been making videos about it about it. And when that happens, the words that you use start to change. One of the hardest things for any expert to do is to remember what words they used to use to describe the problem back before they had a solution to the problem. But if you can do this, and by the way, you know you're getting this right because if you describe the problem in the correct language, the person sitting in front of you will immediately begin nodding their head and leaning into you. I see it all the time. It works online as well as it works on stage in front of people. If you describe the problem the way they were thinking about it, if you use the exact same words that they were thinking about last night, well, then they're going to start nodding their heads and leaning in. You, they can't stop yourself. It's such a natural reaction when you hear someone else who understands you. When you hear somebody else who feels your pain and can describe it the same way that you describe it, that makes all the difference in the world. And so what is the problem that you solve? Two things to look at. Number one, are you describing an actual problem or are you pushing us on your system, your program, your pillars, your good ideas? What is the problem that you solve? Here's the question I like to ask. The night before someone would meet you, the night before someone would even know who you are, what were they laying awake at night thinking about? What were they complaining to their spouse or their best friend about? And what words did they use to describe it? You know, I don't know about you, but when I started my entrepreneurial journey, it was difficult because a bunch of people around me didn't understand what I was going through. My brother and sister 
I love them. They serve others every single day. But they have jobs where they go to work at 9 o'clock, they get done at 5 o'clock, and then they go to work the next day. They collect a paycheck, but they don't own their own businesses. They aren't trying to start a movement. They aren't working for a cause. They think about it differently. Now, my brother and sister, if I'd ask them what they think about me, the answer, I think, is we think you're a drug dealer. Now, I, the reason I say that is because they did an intervention once. They took me out on a boat to go fishing, which is weird because I don't like to fish. But the three of us went out on a boat, and they took me to the middle of a lake, and then they just shut off the motor. And they, all, they, they turned on me, and they said, what do you do for a living? Because you don't go to work every Monday morning. And when your kids have a school program, you can take that time off. And you take vacation a lot. What do you actually do for a living? So I love them. I told them about my business, and they looked at me like I was crazy. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you share your dreams with your family, when you share your dreams with other friends who work different types of jobs, when you share your movement or your mission or your passion with someone, and maybe even it's your spouse or your best friend, they don't catch the vision. They don't get the enthusiasm. And even if they do because they support you and love you unconditionally, they don't know how to help you or how to talk about what you're talking about. Now I'm going to help everybody here put this in the language of the consumer. Because when you put it in the language of the consumer, it becomes much more conversational. Okay? I got, my question always starts like this. Is my brother your ideal customer? And if you work with women, I have a sister too. Is my sister your ideal customer? Now, you don't know because you haven't talked to my brother or sister yet. But the question I would ask is this. I was on the phone with my brother and my sister last night. I was on the phone with my brother last night. What would my brother have said to me on the phone last night that would let you know that he's your ideal customer? Or what would my sister have said to me on the phone last night that would let you know that she's your ideal customer? And it always starts with, hey, Pat. It starts with, hey, Pat. If you want to type into the chat, hey, Pat, and then a sentence that somebody would actually say to another person, I think a great exercise for everybody here is to write down three sentences that your ideal customer said to their best friend or brother last night on the phone. And I always start it with, hey, Pat. What does hey, Pat do? Hey, Pat forces you to be in conversational tone. It forces you to talk like a real person. See, Deanne just said, wants to start a business but does not know how and scared. So what would my brother have said to me? Hey, Pat, I want to start a business, but I don't know how. Something like that. Type it in with, hey, Pat. Now oh, we're going to get real conversational. Hey, Pat, I'm ready to give up on this health goal. I just can't stay motivated, and nothing I try seems to work for me. Anna and Clay, that is great customer language. Your hey, Pat statements are language that you should build into every communication that you do. It should be built into your newsletter, built into your website copy, built into your sales calls. A great presentation starts in the language of the consumer and finishes in the language of the expert. I've heard it said that you should spend less time trying to get the audience to understand you and more time making sure that the audience knows that you understand them. And that is a language game. So the first thing we need clarity on is what is the problem that you're solving for your audience. Which brings us to the second thing we need clarity on is who are we going to solve this for? I want you to think about who's the ideal audience. Some of you might be saying, every living human being in the world. And if that's you, I want to help you get there. But we're not going to start there. Even, even the platforms that now serve every living human being in the world started with much smaller niche audiences. I call it the lowest hanging fruit. And the lowest hanging fruit is often an audience of people that you belong to or used to belong to. When I first started training speakers, the first group of people that I trained were teachers. Why? Because I was one. I already spoke their language. I already had trust. I already, I already knew what their pain points were. There was so much value in starting in a group that I belonged to. So even if you have an offer, that works for every living human being in the world. Look, let's say Valerie is going to do the real estate offer. And I didn't, I didn't ask Valerie any of these questions, so I'm just going to make stuff up. Let's say somebody is a real estate agent. 
Who are you going to focus on selling to? Who are you going to focus on listing their homes? Well, if Valerie is a woman with children, she can focus on selling the family homes. If Valerie belongs to a church, she can focus on selling homes for people who go to church. If Valerie is a veteran, she can focus on selling homes for veterans. Sell it to the lowest hanging fruit. Have that be your core audience. You know, third thing that you need clarity on, and we're not going to talk a lot about this one in this session. Third thing that you need clarity on is what do you want the audience to do next? In those two rooms that I was in at that conference, the speaker in room one knew exactly what he wanted the audience to do next. From the beginning of the presentation, he knew what the audience should do next. And the speaker in room two had never put any thought into what the next step is for the audience. Now, we're going to talk later today in session four about what some options are for that next step. But I would hope that everybody here, by the end of the three days, has a product or service that they can send people to, that they can pay money to buy, and or, ideally and, I would hope everybody here has something free that they can send people to. So when you get on a stage where you can't sell anything, you can give something away for free. Some of the platforms that we go on, like podcasts and other people's stages and media interviews, you often cannot make an offer. I can't stand up and try to sell you something. So it's always good to have something free for a next step, too. Now, on any given day, we're only going to offer one of these. But it's good to have both in our pocket so that whether we can offer something for money or we can offer something for free, that we are going to be able to have a next step for the audience. Why don't you type in the chat right now, I know what my next step is or I don't know what my next step is. If you know what your next step is, then when you speak, or get interviewed, or have an opportunity to be on a platform, a social media platform, or your own event, you know, hey, at the end of this, I'm going to ask them to sign up for my coaching program. Or at the end of this, I'm going to ask them to come to my event. Or at the end of this, I'm going to ask them to schedule a free phone call or download a free report. Then you know. If you don't know, if you don't know, don't worry. Nobody's behind here. Nobody here is saying, oh, well, you're in the wrong place. This is for people who know what the next engagement is. No, no, that's what we're going to figure out over the three days. And specifically, this afternoon in session four, we're going to talk about what the next engagement might look like, what your, what your product or service might look like. So if you don't have one of these, if you're typing in right now, I don't know my next step, you are not behind. You are exactly in the right place. Because later this afternoon, Pete Vargas is going to show you what some different next engagements are. And we're going to let you pick not one, not two, but three of them to try on for size and see how they fit. But this is something that when you start to go out on platforms, when you start to build your platform, you're going to have to get clarity on. If you don't have it now, there's nothing wrong with that. That is all right. The fourth thing you need clarity on is your proprietary process. Your proprietary process is how you help people get from one place to the next place. So I want to map this out for you here. Uh, and, and I want to make sure that I have, oh, here we go. I want to map this out for you. Your audience right now, your ideal audience is here. Whether the, here is they're homeless right now, whether here is they're struggling financially right now, whether here is they have fear or worry or a problem. This is where they are. This is where you want them to be. This is where you want them to be. And so you want them to get from here to here. This is where they want to be, and this is where you want them to be. Here's what your proprietary process is. Your proprietary process is the steps along the way. And I can't tell you how many steps there are from where they are now to where they want to be. So let's say it's a financial offer. You have uh, people who are financially struggling, and you want to get them to financial independence. Okay? What are the steps along the way? What's the first thing they would have to do? What's the second thing they would have to do? What's the third thing they would have to do? That's your proprietary process. Now, we can get really fancy about this. We can say, well, we want a name for each of those steps. 
We can get even fancier and say, all those names should start with the same letter, or all those names should spell out a word. I'm not worried about any of that. I'm just wondering, do you know the steps for your people? Do you know if somebody who would come in, so uh, we have somebody here who's serving people who have children with mental health issues, and I thank you for your service. We have somebody here who's helping first responders with PTSD. And so if somebody comes in and they're struggling with that problem, and then you want them to get to this spot where they're not struggling with that problem, what are these steps? Oh, I want to go to a different color. Blue showed me this ahead of time, so I just want to show you this. I can circle this, and it comes out in red, and then it disappears just like that. Watch this. Hey, thanks. <laughs> what are these steps? I don't care if you have fancy names for them. I don't care if they all start with the same letter. I don't care if they spell out a word. I just want to know, do you know the steps? That is your proprietary process. Your process is how you get your ideal customer from where they are now, oh, I can't write words, to where they are up here. That's your proprietary process. Now, we may not figure that out today, but we want you to know your proprietary process. And so on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being like, I know my steps, and a 1 being like, I don't even know the start box and the end box. Like, where are you on a scale of 1 to 10 with your proprietary process? Christina is like a 5. Lakeisha is a 4. Hey, somebody's an 8. Rosemary is an 8. That's awesome. Hey, we got a 10. We have an 8. Kate is an 8. Ginger is a 10. Michelle is a 2 or 3. Uh, there you go. Hey, thank you for me. Oh, we got a streak of 10s. Bill and Veronica and Melissa, a whole bunch of 10s over in that room. Awesome. I love the fact that you are able to assess yourself and say, do I have this figured out or not? This is the fourth thing that you need clarity on is your proprietary process. And this is something that we're going to work on as we go through your signature talk. This is something that we're going to work on as you think about the journey that you're going to take your customer on. But, and this is something that develops over time. At Advance Your Reach, our proprietary process has changed a little bit over time. Our customers still come in with a great message that needs to get out to the world. Our customers still want to get that message out to the world and build their platforms. And sometimes we change the steps because sometimes things change. So you may not finalize this in these three days, but I want you to be thinking about your proprietary process and how you can help people. What are the steps? Which brings us to the fifth and final of the, of the things that you need clarity on. And that is your big, hairy, audacious goal. What is your BHAG? What is your big, hairy, audacious goal? This is your why. This is why you get up in the morning. This is why this is more than a business for you. This is why you're so passionate about this. This is what you want to accomplish. A great, big, hairy, audacious goal has a time frame. And so we want to help 1 million people build their platforms. And we don't say that'll take forever. We say by 2027. We have put a time frame on it. We didn't say we want to help a lot of people build their platforms. We put a number on it. So a great BHAG is measurable, and it has a time frame on it. Okay. And then the third thing that makes a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal, really good is if you can't accomplish it unless your customers are successful. You can't accomplish it unless the people that you're working with actually get outcomes. Your big, hairy, audacious goal is never, I, I want to get 1,000 people to pay me for this. I don't care if it works for them or not. <laughs> I just want 1,000 people to pay me for this. That's not a great, big, hairy, audacious goal because it's all focused on you. And it's possible for you to accomplish that goal and those audiences that you just typed in, those audiences that you just typed in, they don't accomplish their goals. That's not a great one. Look at ours. Ours is to help one million people build their platforms to impact one billion people. I've done the math. Pete and I could speak every single day 
We can speak on every podcast there is, on every stage we can find. We can be really big on Facebook. We are not going to impact one billion people. We can't. The math just doesn't work. The only way that we impact a billion people is if you help us. The only way that we impact a billion people is if you're successful, if you get really good at this. You've got to help us. And if we can't help you build your platforms, if we can't help you get your messages out to the world, we will never impact a billion people. The only way this happens is if our customers, if our clients, if the people that we serve, whether those are veterans, whether those are people with PTSD, whether those are parents of kids who are struggling, whether those are business people, people who want financial freedom, whatever you just listed as your audience, are you helping them get from where they are to where they want to be? And if that happens, what would your big, hairy, audacious goal, what would your big, hairy, audacious goal look like? What would be the evidence of that? What would we see here? So put a number on it so it's measurable. Put a time frame on it so there's urgency. And then describe what would happen if this whole thing works. That is your BHAG. This is what you're trying to do by a certain time for a certain people. Let's keep them short, let's keep them simple, and let's keep them in the customer language. I had the opportunity to stop by the house that I grew up in. You know, the house with the baseball diamond worn into the front yard. We sold that house after my parents passed away uh, about 15 years ago. But I was in the old neighborhood, and so I stopped by the old house. And I walked up the driveway, and as I was walking up the driveway, I looked to my right, and you know what I saw? I saw track marks. I saw baselines. I saw that the grass was still worn down. And there were paths in the grass where our baselines were 15 years ago. You're doing the exact same thing with your message. You're leaving tracks that will be there for years. You're leaving treads in the grass that others will follow. You're leaving a path from where people are to where people want to be. You are leaving a lasting and positive impact on the next generation. And so in this session, our goal is to get clarity on what you want to do, when you want to do it by, and who you want to do it with so you can carve those paths that will be there for years and years to come.